Yeah, so let's bring on uh, Mike Montalto. Michael, uh, as I said, is a partner at Accenture. And uh, uh, Mike, welcome to theCUBE. Thank uh, you. Dave Vellante. Dave, pleasure. My co-host, John Furrier, Silicon Angle. Um, so welcome, How, uh, how's it going at EMC World for you? It's going great, it's been an interesting morning so far. Got to hear uh, Pat speak and do some live demos. So uh, some very relevant material, all about the cloud, data in the cloud. <laughs> Data's big. It is big, big data in the cloud. So we had Terry on, he was, and he's obviously he worked at Accenture, so, so he knew you. Uh, yeah. Oh, great. Um, Accenture is changing uh, with the marketplace. Can you talk about uh, the delivery aspect? Because it's growing, there's a lot of demand for real proven solutions around cloud, and the backdrop to the cloud is Amazon crashing, this is the recent news, PlayStation got hacked, and then you got innovation in the application side from big data with Hadoop to application frameworks. How do you guys handle that and how, what's the current situation for you guys? I mean, I see this great marketplace, but. Well, absolutely, and I think as Accenture has always done, we invest in the innovation, we invest in the research, whether that's with the Accenture Technology Labs, that's out there ahead of the curve, looking at the Hadoops, looking at how do we take these technologies and apply them to our clients and specific client situations. But we're really being driven now, unlike before, to come to the market, not with just consulting services, but predefined offerings. How can I take something like VBlock, something like UCS, and say here's specifically how I can use it in your situation, and almost have a, a pre-made solution where it's add the requirements, mix it up, and then go forward from there. Now we should, should let people know, Michael's background, he's a, you're a serious IT practitioner. You were in the financial services industry, J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, you were at Prudential. Uh, you used to work at a cloud service provider, a Savvis. So That's you really right. are, um, have deep knowledge, hands-on knowledge. So talk about what's changed. Um, we typically, in this industry, have purchased infrastructure and, and stovepipes, at least in the last 20 years, right? We buy servers, we buy storage, we buy networking, we have a storage admin, a server admin, et cetera. What's changing there and, and why, and what's driving that change? Well, I, one, the complexity, right? Whenever we've had stovepipes, whenever we've had IT and big IT, it's been a big complex solution. It was, it was early on in the data center, big iron, behind the wall, you can't come in, right? You can't do anything with it. IT will tell you how long it'll take. We saw the phenomenon of the internet coming in the 90s and all of a sudden those systems were exposed and everybody was interacting with those systems. We had LANs come out and everybody was interacting with the LANs and I can do some of these things on my own on the PC based environment. The, the real big change now is, is the consumerization has driven that level of interactivity to the next step where people expect to be able to create an application on the iPhone or expect to create an application that interacts with corporate data. I can do this at home, right? Generation Y and, and the younger generation grew up doing it. Right? They know how to make a mashup on their own and they're not willing to wait to hear IT say it's going to take you months to get that application. It just doesn't work that way combined with the speed that business needs to move. Uh, doesn't work that way anymore. So you have to respond, you have to respond quickly, and you have to find ways as an IT organization to decrease that complexity, thereby decreasing the cost and decreasing the amount of time it takes you to bring that solution to the, to the market. The disruption waves that Joe Tucci's talking about, we've seen these before, and, and for, for us, we've, you know, going back into the 80s and 90s, there was some pretty big inflection points that created a new services growth. And uh, we're seeing that now can you talk about that? Yeah, I absolutely think we're at another inflection point, right? Um, the, one of the biggest, and if we look back even before the internet, right, the inflection point was the PC. The inflection point was being able to do IT outside of the walls of the data center, right? So we started to move things faster. Now the cloud's doing it again, right? The cloud, if I'm a developer and I want to get an instance up and running and I want to start to play with Hadoop and I want to start to play with some of these technologies, I don't need to wait for IT. I take my credit card out of my pocket, I go onto Amazon, punch in the numbers, and I've got a virtual machine up and running, right? I can load my software on top of that and go. The danger in that, right, is that in the, the we discipline don't learn, issues, I mean, the yeah. holes, it's like Swiss cheese, security. Security, and if I don't control that, or if I don't learn how to offer something as at least fa as that fast, right, and is at least that good, people are going to do it on their own, and then we have failures, right? We have things that make the news from that perspective. 
So normally we hear about how uh, applications lead infrastructure, and um, but I want to talk about how enterprise apps and the cloud are intersecting and the complexities that that brings. It's not simple with all that legacy infrastructure out there. So can you talk a little bit about the intersection between enterprise apps and cloud and, and what Accenture is seeing there? Absolutely. So you look at the virtualization phenomenon and, and that's an interesting wave that's happened over the last couple of years because now I don't need a physical server. I could just spin off resources. And I think as a separate note, you know, it's interesting when we look at what that can do to an organization, right? We had years where we went around trying to find servers under desktops and servers in closets, but at least they were physical. I could see them. I'm doing the same thing now in many organizations. I've virtualized. I haven't changed the way I operate and I can't even see these things, right? They live in my IT organization, there's nothing physical, they don't draw any more power, how do I know they even exist, right? So you're creating a very interesting phenomenon there that you have to start to manage. But you look at the applications, and applications are moving with some of the technologies we've mentioned to take advantage of the cloud and truly become cloud-enabled on the cutting edge, but the laggard is a lot of our big ERP applications, our big enterprise applications. You've got to do something with them it's going to take a while to change that application architecture and move to a cloud-based architecture. So what we're looking to do now with, the, I think, a lot of the private clouds and a lot of the cloud implementations is have the cloud envelop them so that we can move forward, take what's there today, and apply that speed, get that speed, get that agility, get the flexibility that we need while the application architecture is quickly migrating with that. Dave, so when you, Dave I want to just uh, break in here and just uh, mention to Michael that we have 4,000 people watching right now, live, simultaneous, and we just dropped 300 people when you asked that question, and then when he answered it, popped back up to another 300. So we're at 4,000 simultaneous viewers right now. So <laughs> the folks out there that are watching are, are coming in and out, so we have some people who are coming in and out. So let's give a break here, and, and I'd like you to share from your perspective, being a censure, um, which is a really an amazing company that has a lot of knowledge. Talk to people out there about the future, and there are a couple issues that people are thinking about right now. Job retraining, um, career advice, um, what's hot, and so a lot of the, the geeks out there who are watching and people who are the con IT consumers, um, there's a big role towards data science, data scientists. What's the hot areas, where's the demand, and if people want to be retrained, there's new skill sets, what's required? Just elaborate if you can for folks out there thinking sure, about that. Sure, absolutely. When you think about the change and where IT has been, IT has been about the infrastructure and about the enabling technologies. The enabling technologies are getting simpler. The enabling technologies are getting more prevalent through things like the cloud. Um, so you have more ability to create applications and to do things on your own and play with the technology, right? Anybody can create an iPhone app, an Android app, go through the process, get it published, and it's now consumable. Is there money in that? Is that the long-term career goal? Don't know, um, you know, it depends how successful it is, right? It's changed that whole dynamic. But what corporations are looking at and where they're going to need to focus is understanding the data. What data is out there and how do I harness that data to drive different business uh, Speaking of data, we have uh, 4,300 users now, but Dave, breaking news, EMC just announced Hadoop distribution with Green Plum Appliance. So in the spirit of data and the folks watching out there, you're seeing uh, EMC now announced uh, a product in siliconangle.com has the story, and wikibon.org has our full analysis. And this is something that we've been paying close attention to, Dave, that this data revolution, we were at Hadoop World in October, we've been covering data for two years, we have our own data scientists on our team. Um, this is powering massive growth, massive change, a lot of uncertainty, but yet value. Um, what's your angle, real quick, on the Hadoop, and then we'll jump right back Well, it's in. interesting, I mean, EMC clearly wants to get a piece of, there's a gold rush going on right now in Hadoop, and EMC wants to get a piece of the action. And speaking of gold rush, Michael, I wonder, I mean, you've seen that, you saw the client server trend, you're, you're in the middle of the cloud trend. Companies like Accenture tend to do a really good job of pivoting off of major trends and then adding value in their own unique way. Are you seeing, uh, actually, let me preface that, there's a theory out there that says that the data and information, the ability to package that and monetize that is going to be the new source of competitive value as open source software commoditizes traditional software, like Microsoft software. Are you seeing companies, CIOs, CEOs, thinking about data as a 
as a, as a resource that they can monetize? And, and are you guys organizing your business around that? Well, we're definitely seeing the trend where people are thinking about it as a resource they can monetize with it. It has not been the case in the past, right? The data model was locked up. It stood in a database. Now it's opened. And everybody's wondering, how do I monetize that? We're pivoting through that with our cloud practice. We have a dedicated cloud practice that's looking at those technologies, that's looking at how do I help our clients do that. So there's definitely a pivot underway and a pivot underway not only for the data monetization, but how do I have all of the technology follow that and move that into the cloud. So um, so how's the MC relationship working? Um, I mean, I know you're going to tell me it's great, but can you give us some proof points? <laughs> uh, like? say, uh, to start with it, it's great. Uh, when we look at the, the uh, major area where we've been, I've been focused is with the VCE, with the integrated technology and converged infrastructure. It's a key technology that really helps us deliver value much more quickly for our clients. No longer do we worry about the stovepipes, no longer do I worry about how do I put it together, but I start to think about services. What services do I provide for that enterprise application whose architecture hasn't changed? And that's a key value today that no one else is delivering in the marketplace. So definitely a, a unique aspect of our EMC relationship. What does that mean for your former colleagues who are, who are IT practitioners? I mean, let's say you're a, a storage administrator or a Unix administrator or a server administrator. Should you be sharpening your, your skills and, and changing them? And, and, and if so, to, to what? Uh, I think it, it presents a great challenge for my colleagues that are storage administrators or Unix administrators, server network, because I'm forced now to think outside the box. I can no longer just be a storage in, Administrator, I have to think about what is the network impact, how does that work with the network, how does that work with the server side of the house. So it really opens up a world of learning for, for that individual, right? And you know, lets them get involved in more things and get closer to the application, which is a much more interesting problem about how do I make a system work rather than how do I allocate LUNs or how do I route something through the uh, data network or, or through the storage network. So I broadens their ability right, to, to do that, opens up a world of learning, and I think in general causes a shift to the engineering. No longer are my engineering things at deployment time, I'm engineering things well in advance in a very structured manner so that I capture that service, all of the engineering in the service, and then the operations side is now much more automated and really operates in much more of a, I need to right click to deploy a service. So the operations side is the side that's going to see some pressure and where you know, I would want to be as a storage administrator moving upstream to that engineering and really understanding how these pieces come together. One of the reasons people work with a company like Accenture is because you are independent. You can give advice that's you know, technology or vendor agnostic. We're, what's your problem is sort of where you start, right? right? And then we'll figure out what technologies are best to deploy. Um, having said that, Something like vBlock, a lot of people talk about the, the fear, and this is not true just for vBlock, but it's you know, IBM, HP, Oracle, whomever, they fear of lock-in. Um, are people still concerned about that? Um, um, how does Accenture manage that? What do you guys tell customers that are, that are worried about that lock-in factor? Well, yeah, definitely still concerned about lock-in and about looking at, you know, am I buying into a proprietary technology and am I going to be unable to move from this? When you look at what vBlock is, vBlock is the integration of commodity components, of things that are out there. At the end of the day, the workload is represented in the instance of the virtual machine that lives on vBlock, so therefore it's portable. You know, we see and we're working through models that'll let us go from the private cloud, which lives on a vBlock, to the public cloud, which is leveraging the technology. So I think that that fear is there, but as you start to peel back and you look at that, you can quickly dispel that and show how it gives additional value and how it actually enables you to go f past that uh, proprietary lock-in of yesteryear. So we're here with Michael Montalto, uh, Accenture partner, and we're talking about the changes in the industry, the consumerization of IT, uh, this new notion of um, a V-block, which is this logical block of infrastructure that's deployed to service applications. Think of it as a horizontal infrastructure as opposed to stovepipe infrastructure. And my last question for you, Michael, is what advice would you give to your your fellow practitioners out there that are looking at all these sea changes? Um, what would you tell them? What should they focus on and, and, and uh, to help them succeed? You've got to focus on how to drive business value. How do I move up and how do I look at how IT operates as a system, as an ecosystem, and how that relates to the business? If you're looking in that area, that's an area that is always going to require an engineering aspect, right? The human mind to solve a problem that can't be automated, that can't be replaced through another piece of software. So really, you know, look at that ecosystem, look at the engineering problem, and solve the engineering problem. And that's Excellent. how you'll grow in your career. All right, Michael, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great My to pleasure. have you.
Thank Pleasure you. Thanks for your thanks for your time.